All right, so in this video, I'm going to go over precipitation reactions. So in my last video, I was talking about the solubility of ionic compounds and the rules for determining whether an ionic compound is soluble or, in, soluble or insoluble. And those rules are going to come in handy when we do precipitation reactions. So in general, what you do in a precipitation reaction is you mix two or more solutions together. So these solutions could be ions or they could be soluble ionic compounds. And we mix these solutions together and upon mixing those two solutions together we get a solid that forms out of the solution. This solid is called a precipitate or we say that the solid precipitates out of the solution. So the word precipitate could be used as a noun or a verb. Anyway, the solutions that we start with, those are always going to be soluble ionic compounds. And we express the fact that they're soluble by attaching AQ in parentheses at the very end of it. So these little things in parentheses are, are very important when you do precipitation reactions and you can't leave them out. Anyway, for a soluble ionic compound, you're going to use the AQ for aqu aqueous. So both of these are soluble ionic compounds. However, if the product of the reaction is an insoluble ionic compound, then you would use S in parentheses for solid. Otherwise, if it was soluble, you would use aqueous, just like the reactants. So let's go through an example um, on a, just a simple example on precipitation reactions. So suppose I have silver ion, Ag+, plus, and that is aqueous, and chloride ion, Cl-, minus, that is also aqueous. So suppose I have a solution of silver ion and I have a solution of chloride ion, and they're both dissolved, so they're both aqueous. Now, upon mixing these two solutions together, let's see, I have a silver ion, that's my cation, I have a chloride ion, that's my anion, so the formula for the product is going to be AgCl. And now we have to assign the state of matter that AgCl is in. So is it, sol is it solid or is it aqueous? And that's where the solubility rules are going to come in handy. So let's look at the solubility rules for this compound and see if we can't find out, see if we can't find out whether this is soluble or insoluble. Let me just uh, find my appropriate uh, solubility rule here. Okay, here's a good one. All right, it says, so we're talking about AgCl here. It says that compounds containing chloride ion, bromide ion, and iodide ion are soluble. So it's looking like this is going to be soluble, but then read the rest of the rule. It says chloride, bromide, iodide, these are soluble, except when these ions pair with silver ion, mercury 2, 2 plus ion, or lead 2 ion. So this is actually going to be insoluble because of the exception of this rule. Silver is one of the exceptions. So that means I'm going to attach an S in parentheses instead of AQ. That means that this did not dissolve in water like the ions did. So that's an example of a very simple precipitation reaction. Now we're going to move on to another one that's a little complex and the reason why is because it involves uh, ionic compounds instead of just free ions. So suppose I have the following uh, reactants of my reaction. So I have silver nitrate, so that's AgNO3, and I have sodium bromide, Na BR. So what are the uh, products going to be of this reaction? Well first, we have to realize that in our initial condition we said that both of these are soluble. Both of the solutions that we mix together are soluble. So that means both the silver nitrate and the sodium bromide must be soluble. So now we have to apply the solubility rules again to see if these, these two things are even soluble. So if you look up the solubility rules, uh, there's one for, okay, it says that all compounds containing lithium, sodium, potassium, nitrate, okay, so nitrate, that's going to be soluble, so that means this is going to be AQ, 
And then I'll go back to my same rule that had the chloride ion in it. That also applies to the bromide ion. It says that these are generally soluble, except when they pair with uh, silver, mercury, 2, 2 plus, or lead 2 ion, and it's not. It's pairing with sodium ions, so both of these are going to be soluble, so we're going to write aqueous. So, indeed, we may have a precipitation reaction because we start out with two soluble ionic compounds. So now we're going to uh, look and see what our products are going to be. And generally, what we're going to do is we're just going to write out all the possible products, and then we're going to figure out, using the solubility rules, whether they're solid or aqueous. So what I like to do is I like to uh, identify my cations and my anions in the reactants. So our cations, our posit positively charged ones, are going to be the silver ion and the sodium ion. And our negatively charged ions, or the anions, those are going to be the nitrate ion and the bromide ion. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to crisscross, we're just going to swap out the, uh, the cations and anions. So whatever anion was paired with the silver ion, we're going to pair it with the other an uh, anion, which is the bromide ion. And we're going to do the same thing with these two ions. So I'm going to have silver ion and bromide together, and then I'm going to have sodium ion and nitrate ion together. So let's write out those products. So silver is going to pair with bromide, so that's going to be AgBr. And we don't know the state of it yet. We'll figure that out in just a second. And then we have the sodium ion and the nitrate ion pairing together. So that's NaNO3. And we don't know the state of that either. We still have to look at the solubility rules. So let's start with AgBr. Is that soluble or insoluble? Well, remember, I'll pull out the rule again. If you have bromide ion, it's soluble, except if you have silver ion or these other two ions pairing with it. So that means that this is, gonna, this is not going to be aqueous, this is going to be a solid, because this is an insoluble ionic compound. And then I'll pull out my other rule regarding the nitrate ion. So it says, this rule says that if you have the nitrate ion, then it's soluble and there's no exceptions to that rule. So that means that we're going to attach aqueous to this side of the equation. So this is indeed a precipitation reaction because we do have a solid precipitating out when we mix these two solutions together. Note, you could also add more than two solutions. You could have three solutions together and then there would be a host of other possible products. But in general, I think most problems, there's just two. So let's go on to another example on these precipitation reactions and see what happens uh, given another scenario. Okay, so suppose I have sodium sulfate, so that's Na2SO4, and if you look at the solubility rules, this is aqueous. I'm not going to pull them out. Just trust me, that's aqueous. And KCl, potassium chloride, that's also going to be aqueous. If you refer to the rules, which I do recommend doing, refer to the rules and um, you know, see, check for yourself that that's aqueous. Anyway, so we have Na2SO4, that's uh, sodium sulfate, and then we have KCl, that's potassium chloride. So we're going to write out the possible products. Uh, if we identify our cations, those are sodium ion and potassium ion, and we identify our anions, those are going to be the uh, sulfate ion and the chloride ion. So now that we've identified cations and anions, we're going to mix them up. So that means one of our possible products is going to be, looks like the sodium and the chloride ion go together. NaCl, and we don't know the state of matter, we'll save that for the very end. And then our other possible product is going to be from the potassium and the sulfate ion, so we'll get K2SO4. Remember, because each potassium ion is positively charged, uh, a positive one charge, we need two of them to balance out with the negatively two charged sulfate ion. And we don't know the state of that either, we have to determine it from the solubility rules. And, that, and uh, now uh, let's look at sodium chloride. Uh, it says that all solubility rules say that all compounds that have the sodium ion are going to be soluble. That's according to this rule here. Let me hold it up a little better. So that's going to be aqueous now because we just determined that that's soluble. Potassium sulfate, if you apply the solubility rules, you'll also find out that this is aqueous as well. Hopefully you're 
teacher, professor, or whatever, which is, is just going to have the uh, solubility rules on the back of your test. Otherwise, you know, good luck. It's a lot of memorization, but you kind of have to do it. So notice that we have two aqueous reactants, but then we have two aqueous products. So this is not a precipitation reaction. So if both of your products are aqueous and neither of them are solid, then we say that there is no reaction. We did not get a precipitate out of the solution. So there you go. Uh, that's just a basic lesson on precipitation reactions. So good luck.